Greetings everyone, my name is Edderville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Man Maker. During the last part, I covered 6 Virusimed levels, so in this part, I'll be covering at least 4 or 5 more Virusimed levels, starting out with this one. The Fortress of Chivalry by Sonic Binacle Master, with 9 plays and a score of 2. As always, if you want one of her levels to be featured in a future part like this one, please leave both the level name and level ID either in the comment section below or direct message me on Twitter. Also as always, the full disclaimer of this entire LP series is linked in the description below. Also in the description are the timestamps for all the levels that I cover in these parts, so if you want to check if her level is covered, expand the description. So, Proto Man takes double damage here, so I gotta be careful. Pretty easy opening guard. Uh, these cannons are going to be the biggest problem. Checkpoint placement is at least on a more generous side. Also, I was going to cover a level called Ringman Remixed by this level author, but when I tried opening the level ID, it didn't exist anymore. So I decided to play this level instead. Just some careful Kazakh platform platforming. It's the Sniper Joes that prove to be the most troublesome. Incoming, we have Jar Blocks. This definitely feels like a Fortress level, because it already expects you to understand how these gimmicks work, as they're placed over Obama's Piss initially. This is one of Sonic Bionicle Master's tougher Fortress levels, but it's certainly doable. Introducing the Sparkman platforms. Tink fast. That jump. I'm gonna have to do a slide jump. Thank you. 
After several failures off screen, I did it, at least eight of them. That one jump near the midpoint of the room caused a lot of deaths. Already, this is a lot tougher than anything else I've experienced in Wise Revenge Fortress. This day seems to be easing up a little bit. Just a little though. Ran face first into that. Kind of a jerkish placement, if you don't expect it. Well, there's a checkpoint there, so it isn't too bad. Another one of these jumping segments. Didn't jump at the correct time. I much prefer Hammer Joes here because they take less damage. I'm just basically playing keep away when using the Cossack platforms more than anything else. It's rather slow. That was rather easy. I presume once I edit down this level, it's only going to take about 7 to 8 minutes to complete, but we'll see. With the exception of that one room, this felt like a fun level. Thank you for going easy on me, Nightman. I expected you to jump around a lot more, but you are content to just use an eye crush several times ineffectively. It's a fun level, but I wouldn't recommend this fortress stage unless you are on already understand how the Kazakh platforms already work, especially how to slide off of them. Second level on the lineup is The Frozen Fortress by Ninja, with 11 plays and a score of 1. I actually played one of their stages, Box Testing Facility, back in the latest, or rather the previous, the most popular queue level parts. And that was an okay level, so let's see how this one fares, in comparison. Oh, there's a Yoko block there, of course. Or I could have damage boosted, that would work too.
There is probably a secret to the right over there. Can you make this jump normally? There is an invisible ceiling there, so... I think you're forced to use your utilities. Let me see where that upper ladder takes me to. Nowhere. Most of this stage is doable buster only, excluding that previous segment. Sadly, nothing can cut through the gyres in this engine. This is in Magul 2 with the Slash Claw. Rush Death segment? Or rather, Rush Death screen? Nice blue color scheme. Do we have a Galaxy Man teleporter launcher segment coming up? Also good checkpoint placement? I always point out good checkpoint placement in these levels, as many levels don't get them right. at least can freeze the gyres. Maybe that's what he intended to do? You can sneak on true, but the gyres deal a lot of damage per hit. So I suppose you're intended to use Ice Slasher there. There is a full weapon restore after all. And this is a fortress level, I suppose, not a roadmaster level.
It seems that we can only freeze partial fragments or the tires of those enemies, not all of them at once. Unlike Box Testing Facility, this level is quite expansive. It feels like a full-fledged fortress or traditional level. So that's definitely a plus. I suppose this marks the end of the level. Nice transition where you face Skullman and his two triple cannon cohorts. So far, this was a decently or above averagely constructed fortress stage. I wish it focused more on its main gimmick of being frozen. And there were some the odd placement of that ladder with the forced rush coil usage. Then again, you are forced to use the rush jet in this stage, so it makes sense. Good work, Ninja. This is a vast improvement over your box testing facility level, which didn't explore and fulfill its potential. Here it is. Third level on the lineup is Mega Man Ultra Intro City Under Attack by Excalibur Emerald Mission with 26 plays and a score of 3. This is going to be an introduction level, so it's probably going to be on the easier side, introducing us to all the mechanics of Mega Man. In fact, we start out with nothing, just jumping and sliding. Now we gain access to the Rush Coil and the Mega Buster. Some live test practice. And here you're forced to use the Rush Coil, so you understand how it works. A short refilling station. And a mini boss battle. One of the harder mini bosses to deal with, due to it being invulnerable for most of the time. A strangely empty room over there. I would expect it to be filled with at least one enemy type. So that was our introductory level. Pretty easy, but it introduces us to Mega Man's base movement, the Mega Buster, how to use it, mini boss battles, as well as the Rush Coil utility. This would fit in a Mega Man fan game as a decent introductory level. Now we face Cut Man. Who is, of course, weak against the Mega Buster to make it a lot easier. That wouldn't exactly be necessary as he's easy enough already, but... 
I guess it's because it's an introductory level. It accomplished its goals fairly well. Fourth level on the lineup is Pathway of Pain, but now it's version 3 by Nuclear Stomp, with 6 plays and a score of 1. There is always a secret to the left in many of these stages, that's why I always check, as long as there aren't any walls to the left. Nice way of introducing us to the fact that the jet bombs can pass through walls. As well as showing us how they work over a safe environment. Now this is introducing us to how the punch blocks and the cracked blocks work. As well as how to rotate them. There is likely a goodie hidden under there. There was. This stage as well has good checkpoint placement. Teaching us that we can bounce on top of the push blocks. Just be careful not to get crushed against the ceiling. Or here as well. This stage is solidly constructed, nice difficulty curve and nice introduction to gimmicks. This feels like it's somewhere between a traditional level and a fortress stage. Already I give it about a 7 or 7.5 out of 10, it's above average. If this was an entry to Magmal 2, this would have easily scored in Tier 5 or Tier 6 for me. At least Tier 5 or Tier 6. Probably even Tier 7. Snazzy intro.
Smashing job, Nuclear Stomp. You did a wonderful job at this level. Currently my favorite level to part so far. I already explained all the things that this level does well, so I'll move ahead. So fifth and final level of the part is a simple quick draw 2 by Knight Curse X with 6 plays and a score of 1. Already in this episode, I say that on average, all the levels featured here are of a higher quality in comparison with the previous episode. Neuter or something here, but first let me hit the checkpoint. There is something to the right as well, so let me go to the left first. That's usually where the secrets are hidden. And there's our gift. Well, not gift, reward, as gift implies that it was handed to us. We had to work for that one. It wasn't just a free e tank. We had to go to a small gauntlet of enemies. Uh, I'm not sure how I saved myself there. That was a lucky jump. Is this a reference to something? These symbols? Square, line... Ah, these are the tetronomos. I think they are at least. Wait, is there something to the left? That looks awfully suspicious. Nope. Would have been a nice place to put a, a secret. Um, a very straightforward level. Then again, it was called a simple quick draw after all. You know what, I'll be covering one more level after this as this was rather short. So, sixth and actual final level of the part is Get Ready for the Next Battle Version 5 by Magmax with 27 plays and a score of 6. A very short level it seems. We immediately find Springman here.
Oh, this is going to be a bit of a problem. Can I do this? Never mind, I underestimated how far Springman could jump. That was an odd delay. There we go, that was actually a neat boss battle. Once Springman uses the Wild Coil, it does mess up the tracking of the Magnet Missiles. Nevertheless, this was enjoyable. I'd love to fight this boss at the end of his stage. In fact, considering the previous four stages in Get Ready for the Next Battle, we actually had a preceding level, but now we're immediately dumped into a boss battle. Version 4 did have a shorter stage as well, but at least it was several screens long, and had a neat idea. I'll still give it a thumbs up because of the neat boss arena. So overall, out of the six levels I covered in this part, my favorite level would definitely be Pathway of Pain version 3 by Nuclear Stomp, with an honorable mention going to The Frozen Fortress by Ninja. So in the next part, I'll be covering several more Veer Smith levels. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Toodles!